Greetings to you, dear televiewers of Divine Mercy Radio Television, and welcome to our show, Signs and Symbols in the Church. I am your host, Father Gavi Zinking, and for today's edition, I would like us to talk about the cross. I would like us to talk about the cross. It is rather a very known symbol of our faith, of our belief. But what is the cross? What is the cross? The Casimir of the Catholic Church tells us that the cross is a unique sacrifice of Christ, the one mediator between God and man, the instrument through which our Lord Jesus Christ won for us our salvation. If you read that from Numbers 618, once a symbol of humiliation, of torture, and of death, the cross has become for us a symbol of life and of resurrection. Christians turn to the cross as a symbol of repentance, of sacrifice, of suffering, of penance, of solidarity. The cross has become for us that symbol that deepens our relationship with God. That reminds us of that reminds us of that ultimate price that Christ paid for our salvation. However, different cultures and different civilizations civilizations have given different meanings to the cross and that is what we shall be looking at today we shall be looking at the different types of crosses that have existed within time and what they mean and what did it signify for the people first of such crosses is what they call the Latin cross. The Latin cross is quite familiar and known by many. The cross with the horizontal symbol like this and vertical symbol. The Latin cross symbolizes the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and it is a symbol of a belief in that instrument through which we Christ through his death won for us our salvation. However, permit me at this point to distinguish between a cross and a crucifix. Many people ask the question, is there a difference between a cross and a crucifix? A cross is simply that T-shaped instrument that was used for crucifixion. Like we said, a, cru a cross before in the pagan culture was a symbol of torture and of death. But now it is, now it is a crucifix. And that tells us that a crucifix is just the, the T-shaped instrument, but this time around with Jesus Christ on it. And the word crucifix comes from the Latin crucifixus. Crucifixus. That stands for fixed on a cross. So Jesus Christ is fixed on a cross. That makes us to refer to it as a crucifix. The next important cross I would like us to talk about is what they call the Greek cross. The Greek cross is like a symbol of an X with all the sides being equal. Remember that with the Latin cross, the, this one is a little bit longer than the, 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 the T cut. But with the Greek cross, it is a little bit more or less equal in all the, its dimensions. The Greek cross was most used during the earlier the earlier years of Christianity, but nowadays it is not very common to use to see the Greek cross. The next cross we shall be looking about is we shall be talking about is the Tau cross, also known as the cross of Saint Anthony. The cross of Saint Anthony, also known as the Tau cross, is a particular type of cross reserved for Catholic Catholic saints who manifest the division the devotion to Saint Anthony. Saint Anthony is said to be the father of all monks and he holds a great significance of great significance to the Catholic Church and to the Orthodox Church. The Tau Cross is recognized by its unique T shape, exactly like the T, with an arm being silent on top. So unlike the crosses where you have a small length that protrudes up, 
the tau cross do not does not have any protrusion up the next cross is the tree of life cross a tree of life cross is a simplified version of the tree of life that we know a symbol that represents many things that represents ancestry family and life you know that a tree is a symbol of you know the unity of the branches that signify life and family and ancestry it is essentially it explains that everything in this world is interconnected just like the branches and the leaves though many they may be are interconnected and all linked to the trunk that is one it also represents growth as well as physical and mental strength the next is the upside down cross also known as saint peter's cross saint peter was crucified on the cross but it is said that at his crucifixion he refused to be crucified on the normal cross like our lord jesus christ he asked that if he had to be crucified or to die by crucifixion on the cross let his cross be turned upside down and that is why this cross is commonly known as saint peter's cross the next is the eight pointed cross the eight pointed cross also called the maltese cross that you can see with eight sides it's essentially a cross that is made up of four distinct v shapes but these four distinct v shapes can be multiplied resulting into eight points and that signify the eight or all the four corners of the universe the significance is that the gospel spreads out to all the four corners of the universe and this cross was usually associated with the knights of hospitality and they wore this cross as a symbol of honor and a symbol of their devotion to their cause the next is the celtic the celtic cross the celtic cross is similar to the latin cross but with a circle round it round its four arms and this circle in christian tradition is said to represent the trinity or in some other cultures the rising sun the rising sun you know, the sun is secular in nature and this cross came about in ireland within the year within the 19th and the 12th century and from ireland it was also uh, it was also it moved on to great britain and then to france all these within the years within the 19th sorry within the 19th and the 12th century the next is the wooden cross a wooden cross bears the same meaning as the latin cross but with the difference that it is made up of of wood this is because this cross is more is more uh, is is more likened to the cross on which jesus christ died you know it is said that jesus christ died on the wood of the cross and so through devotion to jesus cross it is said that we get into the real touch with the actual cross on which christ died after this we shall be talking about the orthodox cross this cross started in a byzantium and it was and it has become more popular in russia and the slavic lands around the 13th century Today it is recognized as the Eastern Orthodox Cross. The top bar represents the sign hung up on, of Jesus Christ, on top of Jesus Christ's head, the Inri symbol that stands for Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. In the regular form for Latin cross, we see that top bar there. However, when you look under under the cross, you see another bar slanted a little bit to the side upwards to the right and downwards to the left this side slanted up represents the good thief who beckoned on jesus christ to remember him when he gets into paradise why the side slanted down represent the bad thief on the on the cross who cursed and who cursed jesus christ thus forfeiting his opportunity for repentance and for salvation the story goes that the bottom slanted line was first of all straight 
and this was added by St. Anthony, some, sorry, St. Andrew the Apostle during one of his homilies on the resurrection. He explained the importance and the significance of the cross and that is where he explained that slanted nature, why the, one slant, the, the portion slanted up stands for the good thief and the portion slanted down representing the bad thief who refused repentance. The next cross is the cross of St. Emilien of Congola. The cross of St. Emilien of Congola is a cross that symbolizes the saint that it's named after. St. Emilien was a saint that lived between the 5th and the 6th century in La Rioja in Spain. After that, we shall be looking at the Coptic cross. The Coptic cross is a cross that symbolizes the Coptic Catholic Church and the Coptic Orthodox Church. There are two variants of the Coptic cross with the modern version which is a little bit intricate in colors and in shapes. However, the older variant was far more straightforward with four T shapes surrounding a cross with a circle at the center. It has three points representing the Holy Trinity, as you can see, three points, and has 12 points representing the 12 disciples. If you count it all, it makes 12. Next, we have the Russian cross. The Russian cross is another term for the Orthodox cross, which we have just seen, but it contains added an added horizontal line above, but it contains an added horizontal line above and slanted and a slanted line below its center. I would like us now to look at the Marian cross. The Marian cross is a variant of the Latin cross with the letter M either beside or below the cross itself. The letter M signifies Mary who was present at the day of the Calvary and this, pope, this cross was introduced by Pope John Paul II who invented this cross in a way to, to embody in a particular way the devotion to Mary, the Marian devotion. The next is the papal triple cross. The papal cross or the papal triple cross as it is called by some is a cross with two additional horizontal lines above the first one. We have the horizontal line and then we have two additional lines above. It is used to symbolize the office of the Pope. The three strips represent God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. And if you take note of some symbols about the papacy, about the Holy Father, you will most likely take note of this cross on it. The next is the Angkor Cross. The Angkor Cross, not very common nowadays, is a cross, is that cross that the earliest Christian community used during the period of persecution. The Angkor Cross is like an anchor, the anchor of a ship. And because the people of the, the, of the early church, the early Christian community, were used to ships and sailing, the symbol of an anchor was a more or less accepted symbol and so it was used to disseminate the presence of Christians. Its design was taken during, was used during the persecution to show the hideout of Christians. It is rooted in the book of Hebrews chapter 6 verse 19 which mirrors those words about the anchor of souls. The next is the cross of San Damiano or the San Damiano cross. This cross is a unique cross that St. Francis of Assisi, of Assisi prayed to. Remember in the, the, the story of St. Francis the, of Assisi, how he knelt before this uncompleted cross and before this cross in, in this dilapidated church and prayed and God spoke to him and revealed to him his vocation, his mission. Why St. Francis prayed, he received the instructions on how he was going to rebuild the Lord's house. That's that church that was falling out. And it is cherished by many Christians, particularly Christians who have devotion to St. Francis. Here yeah, we are thinking and uh, remembering particularly the Franciscan orders. The next cross we shall be talking about is the cross of St. Andrew or St. Andrew's cross. St. Andrew's cross is a slanted cross that symbolizes the crucifixion of St. Andrew, the patron of Scotland. 
This cross has become a national symbol for them, and it is slanted as it is slanted as many believe that Saint Andrew was martyred in that manner. So that position of being slanted tells us or gives us an image of how Saint Francis, uh, sorry, Saint Andrew, how Saint Andrew died. After that, we shall be looking at the Jerusalem cross. The Jerusalem cross is a cross that features four small crosslets on each of the four quadrants of the main cross. It symbolizes Jerusalem's coat of arms during the years 1820s. This dates back to around the 12th century. The four smaller ones represent are representations of the four gospels on each side, and it also represents the gospel spreading around to all the four corners of the earth. The next cross we shall be talking about is the Templar cross. The Templar cross is worn by knights and it has, it has as a symbolic meaning, it has a particular symbolic meaning to them. The Templar cross is worn by knights and it has a symbolic meaning to them. The knights believe that it, it symbolizes their martyrdom, with them dying in combat as an honor resulting in them being sent to heaven so it was a sort some sort of of devotion or faith or belief that if they died with a cross on them then they are going to go straight to heaven and to continue we have the egyptian hieroglyph the egyptian hieroglyph is, like you can see that kind of symbol of a cross of an arch and this cross has a loop at the top it is used to symbolize life in many writings and a depiction of Egyptian literature. You will have taken note of this. For those who read, uh, read ancient literature, you may have taken note of this symbol, this cross on some of the, of the old, earlier writings. And then uh, lastly, we have uh, the cross with the three looped terminals. These three looped terminals on the cross are typical of the Russian Orthodox Church. And the loops are meant to represent the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I was a little bit rapid, and our intention here was to present to you the various crosses that have existed throughout civilization. Why do I decide, did I decide to take all of these various variants of the cross? It's to tell us how symbolic the cross has been to humankind. It is not just to us Christians. But generally, the cross has been so heavy in meaning that it has manifested itself and been given certain uh, devotion and respect and honor in different civilizations, at different times, at different epochs. And that tells of, of how fundamental that symbol is to our faith, is to our belief, and is to our lives. Thank you very much for watching. I am your host, Father Gavi Zinking, and stay tuned to Divine Mercy Radio Television.